Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Payday 3 news update where today we are going over the next dev blog number 14 as well as the first teasers for what might well be the release of the second DLC for Payday 3, Boys in Blue. Some very exciting stuff, so let's get into it all. Chapter marks will be in the video down below if you want to scroll along to the key bits as per usual and also thank you to Starbreeze giving me the blog a day early again because I completely forgot I'm going to MCM Comic Con tomorrow and that meant I wouldn't be able to do the video again on the day. So thank you to Starbreeze for hooking me up with the blog post before that. Dev blog number 14 is focusing on the assassin skill line. This is a new thing being added to the game. This is a skill line that focuses purely on marking enemies and using suppressed weapons and also focusing a little bit more on the rush buff. So there's some explanation to Mio as to why certain things are going on. As per usual, I will link the dev blog in the description unless you want to pause it and read the things I don't read out. But I think the most important thing to begin with is looking at what the actual skills in the assassin skill line do. So we have our base skill, which is called assassin. So the base is whenever you kill an enemy with a suppressed weapon, you gain rush. And the ace is whenever you manually mark a guard or law enforcement you refresh rush. We then have the first main skill in the line skimming the ground as long as you are wielding a suppressed weapon your crouching movement speed is increased by 20% but this can't let you move faster than your current armor speed penalty allows. So this is an interesting one it's obviously designed for only having your mask on but if you actually look at the video which I've got a separate recording for here you can see that with or without that perk it doesn't really make a great deal of difference. I know they say on there the bonus isn't too big but I would appreciate a little bit of a faster increase that doesn't look like a 20% increase. I mean if you want to get all mathsy if you look at how long it takes without the assassin it takes just over six minutes and 20 percent of that would leave you at about i suppose it's not far off from 20 percent but it just doesn't look that much faster maybe it's just the percentage it seems better than it is i don't know but either way slight better movement speed if you're interested next up then you got drop cloth whenever you kill a guard with a suppressed weapon their body can't be detected during the first 10 seconds and any radios from guards you kill this way won't activate until the 10 seconds have passed this is probably the best skill in the line for the stealth enthusiasts i think that's a really really good one then you got duck and weave as long as you have rush you deal 25 percent more damage to enemies from behind but the bonus is reduced again for five percent by each arm armor trunk this time that you have currently beyond the first so it's encouraging you to play with less armor much like the adrenaline skill line so if you have less armor and you can deal damage from behind then you will deal extra damage as Mio says you can get round enemies quite easily so it would be an interesting one to experiment with you then got killer kid aesthetics whenever you kill a marked enemy with a suppressed weapon the nearest unmarked enemy within 10 meters of the target will become marked trying to maintain the marks on different enemies so you're always attacking marked enemies as going along that's a more automated thing that i do really like more skills like that should be necessary rather than the micromanagement ones and then Assassin's Metal, if you have no armor at all, killing a marked enemy with a suppressed weapon will heal you for 10 health. And if you're at maximum health, that will give you adrenaline instead. So as you can see, that's our first skill that feels very reminiscent of Grinder from Payday 2. Not the exact same, because Grinder was dealing damage to gain health, which I did miss. I do like that. But this is just killing to gain health. But it's interesting nonetheless, because as long as you can keep the marking up and you can get some kills quickly, enemy health in Payday 3 isn't the same as Payday 2 anyway, because all cops have the same health, regardless of difficulty. As long as you get the kills, it doesn't really make much of a difference and whatever difficulty you play on will hopefully prove a similar challenge in terms of eliminating police officers so i think it could be quite interesting in execution finally then we have death knell the mastery skills so this is the one you can select without selecting any other skills as long as you've got the base one picked which says that enemy enemy affected by your throwables will become marked and you can see here this works with all throwables in the game so grenades flashbangs and shot grenades it's pretty straightforward for smoke grenades any enemy that comes in contact with the smoke becomes marked and even throwing knives work but it is important to note that the only person who doesn't die to throw a knife is the dozer so it's not really worth using throwing knives with this build in particular but you can see here there is a video to show you when the flashbang is dropped there's a slight delay but when it goes off three two one boom everyone's marks you can see it gives that marking effect so a good throwable build combined with this could be quite interesting so there you have it realistically this is something that needs proper experimentation with in game at base a lot of these sound quite interesting some skills i may not use some skills i might i think there's some good benefits here for both stealth players and for people looking for a different play style and loud something the game desperately needs right now so there seems like there to be some good stuff here i'm intrigued to give this stuff a shot as we know though this skill line is coming in update 7 it's in the next patch which means that whenever it does release we'll be able to get our hands on experiment with it and see if it is as good as it could potentially be from reading it so I'm intrigued to give that a shot. But there you go. That is the assassin skill line. Although one thing that I should point out is that at the bottom of this dev blog post, it does not tease what's coming next week. And if you remember when they put out this roadmap patch, which I can open by going back to the page here, you will see that they told us there was going to be two dev blog posts, then a new dev update, 
and then more updates to the roadmap. Now, if they're sticking to that plan, that means that we should get the new dev update video before the next blog post, or maybe it will take the place of the next blog post. Both speculation, there's no actual evidence here, realistically, more so that there's nothing promised beyond Friday the 24th of May here, and there's nothing promised for next week here. Putting two and two together and trying to get four, that suggests we may get a dev update video next week, and if we do, that means the patch could be out the week after. Fingers crossed, which means we would get start of June for the patch dropping. Hopefully that will happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Let's have a bit of a look at the Boys in Blue teaser, and there's a flashbang incoming, so brace yourself. But here we have a website called The Gateway Report. This is something that Starbreeze has completely built up with a whole bunch of articles that you can just click on and read for things. So if you want to look at Intacto Insurance or a stinker of a trial, you can open them. There's loads of articles that have been written. There's even this little section here called The Gateway Live coming soon, and it has a little teaser. So I thought we'll have a little look at this first and have a look at a very key article that shows you what's coming soon hopefully. So, quick little trailer here. Politics, crime, entertainment. We bring you stories of relevance, because relevant stories matter. Gateway Live, a new show, part of the Gateway Report, coming to you soon. I'm not sure he's doing the uh, narration there, but either way. <laughs> and some coughing but either way very intriguing so it looks like we may be getting some more ARG type stuff like Payday 2 when this comes out I don't know however there is a particular article on here called a golden opportunity for soon defunct Bronx police station as a result of a raid in a Brooklyn gold investment firm the 51st precinct of the New York police has seized what they refer to as a truckload of gold police opened an investigation following up on reports of large quantities of narcotics at the premises of a gold for cash store in Brooklyn a search warrant was executed early Tuesday morning and yielded felony quantities of un specified narcotic substances. There is a whole thing here about the police chief saying, oh yeah, it's secured in the police station. I promise you it's, it's, it's safe. There's nothing problematic here that's going to happen. However, this seems like a setup for DLC 2 because DLC 2 is called Boys in Blue. So it involves something to do with the police as a lot of us had suspected by this point. So a raid on a police station that contains gold and also narcotics could be a really interesting one and it may also give us some actual new unique loot types because as we know payday 3 didn't give us much we had cash we had jewelry cook off gave us meth and there's a little bit of cocaine in spots but apart from that unless i'm forgetting something that's all the loot there is in the game so while we may just get more cocaine again as an option for loot in this heist we'll certainly get gold from the way it's advertised which means we'll finally have some securable gold in payday 3 the fact we didn't get any in the base game is surprising shocking if you want to be more serious but at least we're going to get some more varied loot now hopefully which is very very exciting. There is plenty of stuff you can read through here. I'm not going to spend 20 minutes breaking down loads of stuff. I just kind of wanted to put this on the map. The site was put out about a day ago by the time I'm recording this and I'm sure that more things will be added to it as time goes by but I am quite keen to see where it goes from here. I like these more involved teases of content rather than just here's a DLC now we go quiet for a couple months. So I'm really hopeful for this DLC back not just for the fact that it's hopefully going to kick off a new stage for Payday 3. Once this next DLC comes out we need to have these frequent updates with constant features being added. If they don't build momentum soon, the game will just die off. But I do still have faith that if they can actually turn around the speed of updates, we may be able to pull the game back. Things like this, teasing future content, I do really like. I just hope that it's a good sign of things to come and that we're going to get some news on Boys in Blue very, very soon. For all we know, this picture here could be an image of the actual heist location. I mean, it is quite blurry, but that looks a bit Payday 3-ish to me. Unless I'm crazy, it looks like that could be a layout. Some of the windows look like the windows from No Rest for the Wicked, but the colour change. So I'm trying to overanalyze here a little bit to create some hope, but I do just hope that this is a tease for things to come. Either way, that'll wrap up today's video. Thank you all very much for watching. As per usual, if you've enjoyed it, please make sure you click the subscribe button to stay in touch with all future payday news on this channel. And also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you click the like button helps me a lot and helps get the video out more on the algorithm and get more people watching the content which is always what we're looking for so thank you very much for that let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what you think of the assassin skill line as well as this whole boys in blue potential tease beginning are you excited for it do you not care are you somewhere in between let me know i'll be intrigued to see everyone's thoughts but i will see you all next week for the next dev blog post as well as anything else i can cook up i'm trying to keep up the two videos a week schedule so hopefully i'll have something cool for you next tuesday but who knows as i suggested earlier we may well get some actual news on the patch next week it's not impossible we'll have to wait and see fingers crossed hopefully we do but either way thank you all for watching see you all soon with another video look after yourselves stay safe and have a good weekend